Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine program where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And today, well things have calmed down at the store uh, since the 4th of July. Finally, we're leveling out a little bit, not ordering so much to replace all the wine that we sold. And today I thought I'd do wines that go good with the grilled foods, the things that you're going to be doing this summer. You're going to be out on the grill, whether it be hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, crab boil, barbecue and salmon, spare ribs, steaks, whatever it is, you've got to have a wine for those items. And I got three wines here that I think would go good with, well, each one of those wines would match up nicely with one of those things. The first thing I'm going to start off with is uh, Sonoma Hills. Uh, Russian River Valley Pinot Noir 2011 and this rolls in at 22 bucks which when you're th oh, get this, get this together here Stan when you think about it that is not a lot of money for a Pinot Noir it's out of California so you know you're gonna get a little bit of uh, baby fat a little bit of love handles on this Give the glass a little rinse. So when you're thinking uh, grilling salmon, or maybe you were, you know, vegetarian and you want to grill some eggplant, maybe you're doing a little bit of a halibut, Pinot Noir is the perfect match. And, you know, like I said, Pinot's uh, anywhere under $25 are a good value. And let's see what we get on the nose. So I get a little bit of that cola, cherry thing going on. A little bit of black tea. A little bit of tar action. Not a lot of tar, just a little bit of tar, which, you know, us wine geeks like. Oh my God, I get everything crowded in front of me here. Maybe that's good for you guys, huh? A little bit of cherries coming through. I think I said that already. I've got to quit repeating myself. And this definitely has a more expressive nose. This is what you expect out of a California Pinot Noir. They definitely, because of the sunshine, they express more of the fruit than perhaps in, uh, well, definitely in Burgundy or in the Willamette Valley, Oregon. Uh, you get down into Southern Oregon, you get some more of that bigger fruit flavors. But So this is what we call, it has a little bit of love handles on it, a little bit of fat. You can smell it in the nose. But again, uh, even a little bit of black raspberry coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. A little bit of, you know, interesting, a little spicy. I like that. Uh, a little bit of white pepper coming through, a little bit of black pepper with it. A lot of cherries and raspberries in this flavor profile. Good balance, though. I don't think it goes really fat. You don't get the, ex the idea that perhaps maybe they put a little bit of Syrah in their Pinot, which, of course, you know, uh, some of the California wineries, I wouldn't say they've been accused of doing it, but people think because of the weight of that Pinot, it maybe has a little Syrah in it. So this doesn't have that. It has a nice balance. I like this one. Really smooth. Really delicious. With those, um, that black white pepper thing. Cherries raspberries just smooth delicious a lot of people a lot of you guys are going to like this Pinot Noir I like it great with salmon great with eggplant great with ham probably not going to grill any ham maybe you are but certainly would go with hot dogs even yeah I like it I'm going to go B plus on that one good Pinot Noir for 22 bucks it's a good value let's move on to the next one this next one is one that I've always been a fan of. It rolls in at 12 bucks. It's J. Lore Wildflower from Val de Guy is the name of the grape. Val de Guy, Monterey County, $12. J. Lore is just such a good producer. They, they have some great values. There's your label. 
Val de Guy is the name of the grape now. Maybe some of you remember when they used to call this Gamay Beaujolais. You guys remember that? Well, turns out it's not Gamay. It's something else. So the UC, so the ATT said you got to figure out what this is. You can't call it Gamay Beaujolais anymore. So they did research. Did the UC Davis boys got on it, and they found out it's called Val de Guy. That's the name of the grape. And this one changes from vintage to vintage. It's always good. But some vintages are superior to other vintages. Did I give the vintage on? Yeah, 2013. Let's see what we get on the nose. A lot of like black raspberries and black plum. Get a tiny, tiny herbal component coming through. A little bit of black tea. You know, this is kind of heady. You can get some blackberries. I like the nose on this. It's good aromas. Really nice. Kind of rich. You get the idea. Maybe I'm getting going to get something really good here. And I always thought the Val de Guy would, is a great wine. If you're having a pizza party, it's great with pizza. If you're doing burgers, hot dogs, things like that. I think the Val de Guy is perfect for those things. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice acidity. Great for food. Good acidity. It's almost like a blackberry plum jam with good acid. I mean, this is tremendous wine. A lot of red flowers coming through, too. Wow. Lip smacking good. This is across the board. You could, you could go cocktail on this, but I'm telling you, this could even match up. It would be great, like I said, with burgers, hot dogs, but you could match that up easily with a steak. If you had a nice steak, not overly seasoned, you even could do a little bit of barbecue, some barbecue chicken. This would be good with that. 12 bucks. You could break it out. What a good conversation piece. What is that? It's Val de Guy. What's Val de Guy? You talk about the whole Gamay, Bougelet, you know. It's not, you know, it's not like a Gamay. It's got a little bit more of that new world on it. But it's, it's definitely not heavy, but it has great flavor and good acid. Great bottle of wine. I'm even giving that black tea and a little bit of blueberry. You know, I got, I got to go B plus on that one. Like that wine. Good job, guys from J. Lore. Val de Guy. Who would have thought, huh? I know a lot of stores carry J. Lore, but you know, maybe not all of them do the Val de Guy. If your if your local store doesn't have it, jump on them, get them to carry it. Now we're moving on to an Australian wine, and I think it's important that we don't. Forget about our boys down south. Um, Australian wines have been struggling big time. I mean, they are just tanking. This is the Dierenberg, the Stump Jump Vintage 2011 Grenache Shiraz Mouvedre from McLarenville, region of Australia. Rolls in at about 12 dollars $13. And really, I mean, for those of you who have given up on Australian wine, don't give up on it entirely. I mean, Australian wines are awesome. They just, you know, I think they just, like I said, they spent too much time flooding the market with cheap Shiraz, Yellowtail Shiraz, Jacob's Creek, Lindemans, um, Little Penguin, all those guys just constantly, I think people just got tired of it. And all of a sudden, Australia had this reputation just pumping out cheap, red, sweet wines are very fruit forward jammy wines and that is not what Australia is about they have some awesome wines yeah some of them are big you know Barossa uh, Shiraz is big but when you're in the mood for a really big red you know don't forget about Australia because there are some great values out there and it doesn't have to be Yellowtail it doesn't have to be Lindemans it doesn't have to be Jacob Creek there's a lot of those uh, good brands out there including Dierenberg let's see what we get on the nose 
So this has a little bit of like wet leather thing going on. Getting a little bit of black licorice. Get a bit of eucalyptus coming through, which is interesting. This is a very interesting aromas coming off this wine. Definitely kind of a plum, red plum, cherry thing going on. Maybe a touch of currants and get a little smoke even off of this, which is very intriguing. Tobacco. There's a, there's a lot going on in this wine. Again, $13, all those aromatics. Let's see what we get on the palate. in the delicious category. Big spicy, big spicy on the palate. Currants, cherries, get a little bit of morality, which I like. Very, very intriguing. Nice wet leather on the back end of that fruit. It's kind of and the spice is incredible. I mean, you can really tell this has Grenache in it. Um, yeah, 46% Grenache, 39% Shiraz, 15% Morvedra, or as they say in Monastrell in Spain. Nice wine, good balance. It has some acidity. Delicious factor is there. Minerality is there. There's a lot of things going on in this wine for 13 dollars. You know, and I just have to say, it's hard to find a wine this complex for that kind of money. I'm going A- minus on that wine. I think it delivers a whole lot for $13. B+, plus, A-, minus, or towards the A- minus side. Like that wine. Great for barbecue. I could, You could pull this baby out and you would be the hit of the party. So I hope you're having a great summer so far. We still got a lot of summer ahead of us. We got a lot of grilling to do. Think about wines that go good with the grilled foods, and I, I think we have three here that work really nice. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers. And here's to keeping the snob out of wine.